Okay, so let's look at the second method of solving questions on partial derivative called the first principle method. So look at how to solve partial derivative using the first principle method. So take this example to explain. So it says, given a function or if f of x, y is equal to x squared y, find partial f over partial x and partial f over partial y. Of course, using first principle method. So how do we solve this? So solution. All right, so how do we solve this? So solution, um, what we do is this. Number one. Let's get partial f over partial x using first principle. So how do we solve this using first principle? So first things first, I'll give I'll list my given equation. I'm given the equation f of x y as being equal to x squared y. So what's the next thing here? From here, when it comes to first principle to x, I will add change in x, so it becomes f of x plus change in x comma y is equal to also to my right hand side of the equation wherever i see x i'll add change in x so it becomes x plus change in x now remember that this term was squared so you can see here it's squared that means i will square the term so it becomes squared and then multiply by y so multiplied by y all right so we have this so if this is the case now my next step should now be to expand the brackets so from here i'll have that f of x plus change in x y is equal to so i have x plus change in x all squared let's expand this this is equal to of course it means x plus change in x multiplying x plus change in x <coughs> so how do i solve this this is equal to use the first term x multiply everything here that's x plus change in x use the second term plus x plus change in x Multiply everything you have here. That's x plus change in x. All right. Multiply this. What do we have? x times x gives you x squared plus x times change in x gives you x change in x plus change in x times x gives you x change in x plus change in x times change in x gives you change in x squared and that's equal to this gives you x squared plus change in x plus change in x gives you 2x change in x so 2x change in x plus i now have change in x squared of course x x change in x and x change in x they are the same thing so if they add up it gives you two of it all right, so it means that if I expand x plus change in x all squared, I will have x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x squared. All right, so let's bring that value back to my question. All right, so if I expand this one here, it gives you x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x all squared multiplied by y so i have this all right so let's expand further expanding further i have that f of x plus change in x y is equal to so i'm going to multiply this one too multiply all of this by y so multiply to what you have there x squared times y so y times this one here gives you x squared y. So I'm having x squared y. <clears throat> Multiply this one by y. It becomes plus 2x change in x y plus. Multiply this by y. It gives you um, 
change in x squared and then y or perhaps you can say y i don't put a dot there to show multiplication all right all right so my next tax will now be subtract the initial function from both sides what initial function initial function is the given function which is um, this one here that's f f x y i'll subtract this value from both sides of the equation so what do i have there from here i have f of x plus change in x y minus f of x y the given the initial function is equal to subtract the same thing from the right hand side of the equation and that becomes x x squared y that becomes x squared y plus 2x change in x y plus change in x squared y minus f of x y so we have this <clears throat> subtract this function from both sides of the equation so what do i have here i have f of x plus change in x y minus f of x y is equal to so have writing this one out i have x squared y plus write this one out becomes 2x change in x y plus write this out i have change in x squared y minus so for the right hand side of the equation i'll simply replace the value of fxy fxy from my question i'm going back to my question you can see that fxy here is equal to x squared y all right so bring back x squared y here so that's equal to or minus so we have we have a minus we have a minus fxy i already said fxy gives you x squared minus y x squared y so i have x squared y here so you simply i will replace this term here so usually usually we put this term in a bracket thus it should be like this in a bracket but since it's a single term that's x squared y um there's no need for the bracket so we can still have this in the, in the case where the value of fxy is more than one right let me let me explain what i mean by that so let's see let's see the value of fxy is equal to x squared y let's say plus 3x for instance all right so plus 3x for instance if this was a question here if i'm substituting fxy here i must use a bracket so i'll use a bracket here and that would be bracket plus 3x please you must use a bracket for this but since it's just a single term then um, i don't have to bother about the brackets um, this can still work all right let me go and take this one off here um, this can still work um, right all right so proceeding further so i have this proceeding further here one of the ways you know that your work is correct one of the ways you know that your work is correct when it comes to first principle is that whenever you resubstitute the value of x of x y of a, of a function it will cancel out terms all right so in this case i have x squared y cancelling minus x squared y so this is one way you know that your work is correct all right all of the all of the resubstituted values will cancel out cancel out terms just as you can see here so from here we now have that f of x plus change in x y minus f of x y is equal to so i have this as equal to this term here um of course all of this that becomes 2x change in x y plus work on this one here i have change in x squared y all right so i have this value all right proceeding further my next step here is to divide both sides by changing x all right so i'll divide i'll divide by 
change in x. So divide by change in x, what do you have? I have f of x plus change in x y minus f of x y as being equal to 2x change in x y plus change in x squared y so divide both sides by change in x that means this becomes this one here divided by change in x divide this one here so divide this by change in x divide this one here so divide this by change in x <clears throat> all right so from here what do we have we now have that we now have that f of x plus change in x y minus f of x y all over change in x is equal to from here change in x will cancel change in x you now have 2x y right so i'm having 2x y left plus from here change in x will cancel change in x squared i will left with just one of it so it becomes change in x y so I have change in x, y. So I have this term here. Your last step will now be to take the limit. So I'll take the limit of change in x as it approaches zero. Now what this means is simple. Wherever I see change in x, I will add, I will replace it by zero. So that's equal to 2xy plus, I can see a change in x here. So it becomes zero times y and this is equal to 2xy plus 0 times y is 0 and from here my answer is equal to 2xy so this is how I solve this using first principle method all right so let's try to get um, partial f over partial y for this same question using first principle all right let's get partial f over partial y using first principle All right, so the second part, let's get partial f all over partial y. So how do we solve this? Um, first things first, let's list out the given equation. I was given f of xy as being equal to x squared y. <clears throat> to get partial f over partial y using first principle, to y i'll add change in y on both sides of the equation so that means i'll have something that looks like f into x comma y plus change in y so observe i've shifted my focus to y and that'll be equal to and that'll be equal to <coughs> x squared to y here i'll add change in y so it becomes y plus change in y so i have this all right so this is the value i get so proceeding further what do i get 
I'll have to expand. If I expand this, it becomes f of x y plus change in y is equal to plus change in y is equal to expanding x squared times y gives you x squared y plus x squared times change in y gives you x squared change in y okay so i have this my next step will now be as usual subtract um, the given function from both sides of the equation that becomes f of x y plus change in y minus f of x y is equal to from this side of the equation i have x squared y plus x squared change in y so i'll now subtract the same thing that's f of x y <clears throat> all right so subtract the same um subtract the given function from from both sides of the equation so from this what do i have from this i'm having something that looks like um i have f of x into or x um, y plus change in y minus f of x y has been equal to this gives you x squared y plus x squared change in y minus f of x y f of x y from the question here as you can see is equal to x squared y so i bring down that value into x squared y so it's equal to x squared y <clears throat> again i've said whenever you resubstitute it will cancel out so you can see you have terms that will cancel out so this cancels this and it's off so i'm left with f of x y plus change in y minus f of x y is equal to x squared change in y so i have this concept here my final tax will now be divide divide by in this case since is partial f all over partial y to be divided by partial y so i'll divide both sides of the equation by partial y so what do i get from here i'll have that f of x y plus change in y minus f x y so i'm dividing both sides by change in y it becomes this all over change in y so it becomes change in y is equal to to the right hand side of the equation i have x squared change in y all over change in y to so divide both sides of the equation by change in y such that this will cancel this and that's equal to x squared all right so since i no longer have a change in y terms there is no need for me to take limits so this becomes my answer all right so this is how we solve this question so from the given function we've now successfully gotten the value of partial f over partial x and then partial f over partial y using first principle method so this is how um, this is done <clears throat>